Hi guys, James's Car Craze here. Today I am in the all new, all electric, and a very yellow Ford Mustang Mac E. Now I've been very excited to bring you this car today. This car's been in the pipeline for so long and finally picked it up the other day. Uh, so we're going to go through the usual things today with you guys. Got the full interior tour, and I'm also going to do the full super in depth infotainment tutorials and demonstrations on the massive screen that we have in the middle of the car here. Gonna go through all the driver systems, the assistant systems, uh, all the audio, the climate. Also gonna go through all your steering wheel controls and of course all the display on your digital driver's display in the middle there. Uh, unfortunately, I can't give you an exterior tour of the video today, guys, because for the time I've had this car on the loan period, it has not stopped raining. And to be honest, I don't quite fancy uh, uh, circling the car in the pouring rain. Um, but just YouTube, Ford Mustang Mackey exterior view and I'm sure there's plenty of videos out there where you can have an exterior tour. Uh, so without further ado guys we're gonna go into the video starting with the steering wheel and the digital driver's display. So here we go guys so starting with the steering wheel it's Ford business as always on your left you've got all your lane keeping assist your speed limiter and your adaptive cruise control buttons on there with a little toggle switch in the middle and then on the right you've got your volume up and down your uh, media or radio station uh, left and right you've got your Ford voice system and you've also got the uh, your call and hang up and pick up uh, obviously steering wheel it's decent sized steering wheel not too thick not too thin and I love the red stitching on here and also this sort of gloss black bits on there obviously this is a mustang as well guys so you do have the mustang horse logo on there it's quite a nice logo you've got these nice little lines in there uh, just makes it look like a little nice little premium badge which is quite nice and obviously horn same as always on any car that's on the center of the steering wheel there uh, so in the on the front there guys we've got what looks like two screens but in fact this is your screen here. This is your digital driver's display, which displays your speed. Obviously, there's no rev counter on this because it is an electric car, so there's no revs or gears on this thing. It is all just a single gear drive. These two things, this this little what looks like a screen here, it's not a screen, it's a big sensor. Uh, these two lights flashing left and right on here, you can't see those with the naked eye. It's just because of the camera frame rate and because these are all infrared. Uh, infrared shows on camera but it doesn't show to the naked eye so if you get in this thing you won't see flashing lights it's only on the camera now what this bit here does this is all to do with the car's uh, attention assist so in here there's a little sort of sensor in there which monitors my face to make sure that I'm still paying attention to the road if it doesn't think I'm paying attention then I'll get all sorts of warnings buzzing up on the central screen there and also the big screen to the left of me that we'll get on there in just a moment very very handy feature just gives you a little bit of sort of steering feedback as well just to make sure you are still awake and if it thinks you're tired it will bring up some suggestions of stopping places on the sat nav uh, back to the screen here it is quite a nice screen it's fixed uh, not too big not too small text is perfectly fine you can see it from even in from the fully reclined position on the left at the moment you've got your range percentage at the moment i've got about 85 percent range left uh, given my current driving style that's saying i've got around 231 miles uh, that at the moment is based on nothing on apart from the daytime running lights no air con no heating no fan on the climate no wipers obviously if you put your wipers on if you put your headlights on if you've got your heat or your fan on full then obviously that will deplete the range on there and then this is just like a nice sort of like a bar just to say you know, how much range you do have on there at the moment we're in park mode so in park mode that is your display unlike other cars that you might have seen in my videos you can't cycle through various dis uh, displays on there what you see is what you get when you're in drive mode you'll get all your um, all your assistant systems uh, diagrams and pictures in there other than that that is what you get uh, on the very right there you've got your um, what what status your uh, electric motor let's say is in because there is no gearbox as such in the car uh, this is the all the all-wheel drive version though which has dual motors 
uh, instead of a gearbox and a transfer box. Uh, at the moment we're in park, so obviously you've got the P illuminated in orange there, and then underneath P you've got R for reverse, N for neutral, D for drive, and then L, so if we, if I just scroll down here, so this is your selector knob on here. At the moment it's locked into place because my foot isn't on the brake. Your foot has to be on the brake to then disengage the lock to turn it. So actually if I put my foot on the brake now, will it... No, that's because I haven't actually put the full ignition on. If I turn that button on... Ah, look, there we go. So before I get to that, now I've turned the ignition on fully, you'll see that my screen has changed ever so slightly. So on the left, you've still got your range information uh, in miles and a little battery percentage there. On the right, you've got your miles an hour, and then in the middle, that is your driver assistance features on there. That's, so that's your lane assist, and then all your speed limiter and your adaptive cruise control features will appear on there quickly back to the selector knob down here now i've put the ignition on now if i put my foot on the brake i can cycle through various modes on there so d for drive n for neutral r for reverse p for park this l if i press that that is your regenerative regenerative if i can say it right braking uh, because this is an electric car uh, or electric cars or even hybrid cars have this feature. Uh, what regenerative, regenerative braking is, when you come off the throttle, the electric motors turn into generators because an uh, electric generator and electric motor is the same thing. You just reverse the current, is the, is the simplest way to put it. When you coast, you'll feel some resistance going into the electric motors. That's the motors capturing energy that would otherwise be lost and it's putting it back into the battery. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a very clever system. You're not gonna regain all of your miles of range with that system, but it will, you know, it will help keep, especially if you've got your wipers on or your full beams on or if you've got your heater on, just that little bit of extra energy can just keep your miles going just that little bit more. It, it's default off when you start the car, you have to select the L um, to turn on your regenerative braking. Uh, this car also has a one pedal drive mode as well, which utilizes very heavy regenerative braking. So you don't have to touch the brake unless you need to come to a quite severe stop. But I'll get to that when we get onto the main central screen. Other than that guys, as I said, you, there's, there's nothing else I can really talk to you through on that middle uh, on that sorry on, on that central screen there because you can't change the view that is what you get so moving on then to the big central screen all right guys so gonna go into the central screen here as i said you can't miss it it is enormous it's like having an ipad pro in the middle of your car but even bigger i think this is a 15 point something display it's huge uh, and pretty much 95% of the car's features are operated from this central screen. It's a little bit, uh, let's just try and focus that, because of, of the brightness of the screen and the type of screen, there's a little bit of sort of glow that you might be able to see there coming from the buttons, but if I go in close enough, you should be able to still make that out. Uh, I was going to film this in portrait mode but then that will make the screen a little bit smaller for you guys when you view it so i'm going to keep it in landscape mode anyway so when you get into the vehicle this is the screen that will greet you uh alternatively it will greet the screen will greet you to whatever state you had it in last so for example earlier on i was going through the owner's manual um which is this bit here uh when i got back into the car the screen came back on to the page that i was at when i was looking through the owner's manual which is quite clever if you want to come back to something after getting out. Um, I believe there is a feature to turn it off, which we will explore when we go through the settings. As I said, so this is the screen when you first get in the vehicle. All this top half, that's all the touch screen for your various things to touch, all your settings and your functions. The bottom half of the screen, it's still touch screen, uh, apart from this central knob here, that is all your climate settings. So you've got your passenger seat, heated seat, uh, one, two, and three levels. That's your rear window heat to uh, demist or defog your window. 
you've got max screen defrost so if you've got an icy screen or even a foggy screen you press that and the car will defog your windscreen uh, this is a ford vehicle so you do get the heated windscreen even a standard which saves so much time when you need to de-ice your car it's not commonly in other cars because i think ford did something about copywriting the idea and there's only i can't i, I haven't actually test driven a car that isn't a ford that has a heated windscreen as such um, so very very handy feature and you do get this in the mustang mach -E. in the middle you get this knob which when i got in i thought goes into the screen but what this does it doesn't this is attached to the touch screen and it mimics a finger sort of like the old ipods where you'd sort of just run your finger over like that but you still twist it so that this knob doesn't actually go through into the screen it's just sort of Ooh, sorry it's sort of glued sort of glued onto it <laughs> and then you can adjust your volume controls on there you can turn your stereo on or off by pressing that in there that's still touch screen and then down here you've got your fan settings so when you press that you can then control the fan using the little knob on there you've got your heated steering wheel which is very nice in the colder weather and you've got your driver's seat heating on there as well at the moment i've got everything off because it uses electricity obviously being an electric car everything's off at the moment which is why my windows are a little bit fogged up <laughs> because everything's off at the moment because i'm trying to conserve power your climate setting so to change whether you want it coming on the footwell uh, in the middle of the car or on your windscreen you press this little icon here and then it'll bring you to this screen here which shows quite a nice detailed picture of your interior of your car so you've got your air sorry let me go back onto that sometimes it it times out back to the previous screen if you haven't touched it so you've got your air recirculation on there turn that off again you've got your max air calm to do your windows or to quickly cool the car and then this is your screen heat on there so if i turn that on that will turn your screen heater on on there. I think I have just turned the fan on quite loud. So let's just turn that off. Heat, because this is an electric car, it relies on an electric heater which heats the car, which actually means, sorry, it keeps going off, which actually means the heat comes on a, a lot quicker. Obviously in a petrol or a diesel car, you rely on the heat of the engine, but you've got to wait for the engine to heat up so you don't get instant heat. In here, you get instant heat, which is very, very good. And then on here, you've got where you want that air to go. So like in a normal car, you might have a sort of a dial to turn it. On here, it's touchscreen, so you can have the air going, and it shows you a little graphic where that air is coming from. So you've got your vents on the dash, and you've got your little vent in the back for your passengers in the back. So you've got air coming in there. You can have your air going onto the windscreen to clear your windscreen or you can have it on your footwell as well you, you can have all three but if you have it on all three even if you have the fan on maximum you're not going to get that maximum airflow because that airflow is being distributed between three zones compared to just the one i'm going to turn all those off for the moment because that is one annoying thing about the car that it times out on the screen when you're not actually touching it there we go i'm going to turn the system off there you go. And you, yeah, said so you've got a quick button there just to turn the system on or off quite quickly. Cool. We shall go back. Let's just touch that again. That goes. Um, let's go back onto the home screen. So, so on your home screen, these are all your apps that you get. So you've got your radio on there, and then when it does load, you've, let's just turn that down. You've got all the radio stations that it will pick up. Um, I haven't actually had the radio on at the moment, but you've got a DAB radio and FM radio on there. At the moment, it was default to talk sport. <laughs> uh, so, you know, if you're driving along, I'm sure you can listen to a footy match or F1. Uh, you can cycle through your various stations. Oh, there we go. Just by tapping on there. Because the screen's nice and big, you haven't got to sort of 
use a little finger and you know which, which can be quite distracting when you're driving because the screen's so big it, it's, it's easy just to quickly glance down there press what you want and then look back up to where you're going uh, let me just turn the volume down so i don't want to listen to the radio while i film this so we shall go back to the home screen your phone so in the moment my phone's connected to bluetooth on here you do have apple carplay and android auto both wireless as standard um, obviously if you're used to android auto you'd use android auto same with apple carplay rather than using the cars infotainment uh, i haven't used apple carplay or uh, android auto in this yet because purely for a loan period you know i've got a car that has android auto i know what it does it's the same on all vehicles Navigation, so this is Ford's own sync navigation. I've used it today. Uh, it has got the lane uh, assist feature on there as standard, which I quite like. Same as what Google Maps, even Waze has now. It is a very nice system. It, so the screen's enormous, so you can see roads ahead. And even if you don't have the sat-nav on, sometimes it's quite nice to have the sat-nav screen on. So if, if there's an unexpected traffic jam, you can use the view ahead to plan routes or you get an idea what if you're on an unfamiliar, unfamiliar road you get an idea of what that road layout's doing which is very good i quite like that um unlike on other cars you can't mimic or you can't copy the screen onto your central digital driver's display on there it's all on this big screen but to be honest, as i said the screen's so big you know it is it is just, it is just perfect. Uh, obviously, again, I said if you want to use Apple Maps or Google Maps or Waze, and you can do that via your Apple CarPlay or Android. Also, to go back, uh, obviously, you've got your music on there. So at the moment, my phone's connected, so um, it has all my uh, music, and your music list will pop up there when it loads. As I said, they're, they're your quick access to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Charging. Now if I press that, at the moment I'm not connected to a charger, so you don't get the full um, displays on here. When you're plugged in you get a few extra options on here where you can um, view your consumption so you can see what part of the car used the most electricity. Driving will be the main one obviously and then you get things like your wipers, your climate. Um, it just gives you a nice little graph. But because we're not plugged in, I don't have those on there at the moment. But you do get a massive battery in the middle. Um, now got 229 miles of range. So since sitting in the vehicle with nothing on apart from the screen and the daytime running lights, which you can't actually turn off, um, I've lost about four miles of range. But that's fine. Uh, is it 229 miles? You know that's still not good for a car that weighs over two tons. That's you know that's not too bad. You've got other little things down here. So your EV driving history. Uh, if you're plugged in or you're connected to the Ford app, you press that and you get various data. But because we're not plugged in, you press it, nothing happens. Departure and comfort. So this is where when your car is plugged in uh, at home or uh, at a public charging point, you can use this to select what day and what time you want your car to be at various temperatures. So I don't know, for example, say Monday morning, you've got to get up at stupid o'clock in the morning, get in your car for eight. It's really cold outside. If you put it onto warm, when you're plugged in, the car will activate. It will activate either your heating or your air conditioning. In this case, the heating. And then when you get into your car, your car will already be up to temperature in the cabin and your windows will also be uh, mostly de-iced and defogged. You might just have to do a few extra uh, swipes on the side windows just to get the rest of the any ice off if it is icy. Uh, obviously, this works the same as if it was, I don't know, let's say... Uh, how do I get rid of that? Clear selected. Just say clear that. And say you've got I don't know like a half day at work. It's the it's the middle of summer. It's four o'clock. It's still thirty odd degrees. If you've got a plug-in point at work, or even if, if you're leaving home for an afternoon job, this will then set the car to a nice cool temperature using the air conditioning. 
this will only work when the car is plugged in because it will drain your battery if you use it uh, without being connected to the power supply. At the moment I'm going to turn all this off though because you know for a, for a test period I don't need to do that but that is a very nice feature. Obviously if you want it sort of bang in the middle then just do medium and that's a nice average temperature when it's you know it's a bit too cold for a t-shirt but a bit too um, a bit too hot for a coat let's say. Um, let's get rid of all of that. I'll exit that. Uh, charging locations so that will say uh, where the nearest charging uh, or where this car's been charged before where some of the nearest ones are uh, as I said th this is a list of recently charged locations uh, so the last one would have been Benfleet um, that just gives you a little view just in case you like to stick to the same charging location that's everything on the charging screen if we go press the little home button at the top uh, tips sorry let me go on to that ah there we go so um, my apologies so I thought this was in the other uh, setting it's not it's in here cool boom so this is where does your energy go so on here uh, because I haven't had the car on running in this particular trip all of my energy has been on the climate even though it's turned off, which is a little bit confusing. <laughs> so, which is why I've got 100% for my acceleration, my deceleration, and my speed. And you've got various trip computers on there. So, ah, here we go. So, this was when I was driving the car uh, earlier on. And sadly, it hasn't given me a score of how good my acceleration, deceleration, or speed was. But uh, here you can see, uh, so, obviously, driving is the one you'd expect to take up the most power uh, because it was raining really hard when I was driving it I did have to have the climate control on to stop the side windows fogging up which is why there's sort of a 12% usage on that particular trip uh, other accessories so that will be your wipers your lights uh, if you've got your wireless phone charger on if you've got anything connected to the USB ports which you've got on this thing and the exterior temperature, and that can actually play a massive part. So batteries don't like it when it's too cold or too hot. They have sort of an optimum temperature. Um, so that will be displayed on there. Uh, trip computer two. Yeah, that's the same on there. So that's where you get all of your charging and your consumption statistics on in there. Let's go back on there. Uh, and you do get an owner's manual loaded onto the car as well, which is very handy. It's a lot better than sort of manuals which I've seen on other cars that I have tested in, in the way that it's broken down a little bit more uh, rather than having everything under one category. And it's quite hard to then scroll through what you actually want. Um, you know, so you've got things like general information on there. Um, got your audio, your maps. So every, you know, so if you need a quick reference, uh, you, you haven't got to worry about the book. You can just get it up on your screen here, and there's a few pictures and diagrams on there as well. So, you know, why use the book when you have a massive screen on there as well? Entertainment. I won't go through the individual games or things on there, but you can play games which are preloaded onto this car. Um, there's a little doodle pad on there as well. I will show you that because that is quite fun. Uh, just you know, seems what Tezzas have. You know, let's, let's go orange. You know, it's yeah. You can draw things on there as well, which is quite nice. You can save them as well. So let's go back. Do do do. Uh, where are we? Entertainment. Yeah, jigsaw puzzle. That like, this is really handy if you're going to be stuck in one of those phantom traffic jams that just appear out of nowhere, which you're in forever. Uh, so. You know, if you're going to be stuck there, for, if, you're, if there's been a serious accident and you're going to be stuck there for another two hours, you can play some games. But again, that will consume battery and you will notice your miles going down a bit because obviously you're using the screen. Um, you can turn the screen off completely, actually, and I believe you do that by just holding this down. Normally you do it by holding that down. 
maybe I, I haven't got a setting enabled but normally you can just hold that down and your screen will just go off and it will only give you the time on there uh, let's exit that exit that lovely so now on to the main settings of the car so to go onto the main settings you click on this bit here and you get bought up with all these settings and you start with the controls tab right at the very top now this is your drive mode selection at the moment we're on whisper mode this is the um this is the smoothest acceleration um the smoothest steering the slightly less power output which is good for slippery conditions uh, and it's also the most economical of the drive modes active that is your average just hop in hop out average you get your normal power output on there um, it, you just get your average throttle response average brake average steering and then untamed so this is when you I say when you let the horses run given this is a Mustang so basically that is your sport mode that will give you the best sporty throttle response sporty steering response nice braking response obviously that will use the most power because you're sending everything to in this case all, all four wheels which does use power uh, I have I haven't actually tried it in that mode because it has been very wet and you know even this does have four-wheel drive the instant torque you get from electric motor it's still you know you, you still don't want to be mashing your foot when it's slippy or it's waning or it's icy today i've just had it in whisper mode it's still very responsive um compared to a combustion car uh, in the way that again an electric motor has instant torque so when you put your foot on the accelerator that power is there instantly there's no turbos to spool up or there's no you know there's no it's the the gap in acceleration is tiny moving down one pedal drive so this is what i was on about earlier so you which is quite handy here so you've got a nice little dial up that comes up so this allows you to slow a vehicle and bring it to a stop only by using the accelerator um the quicker you bring the accelerator up the harsher it breaks um, but you can bring a car, you know, this is nice if you're on a sort of a motorway or an A road uh, in in the UK, obviously, if you're in the States, or you've got your freeways and your interchanges and things like that. Um, but yeah, this is, I, I, I haven't tried this feature again yet because it hasn't really been safe conditions to do so. And again, I'm not used to electric vehicles, therefore, you know, you'd, you'd have to get used to the car first before uh, I recommend you start using this just because it can be a very different experience that you would have to get used to obviously you do still use the foot brake to come to sharper stops or just to control that a little bit more but one pedal drive just takes some of the uh well not that this is a difficult car to drive but it just makes it that little bit easier propulsion sounds so again obviously this is an electric car it's very quiet but propulsion sound what that does is send an artificial engine noise to the speakers so when you put your foot down it does still sound like you've got a combustion engine in the front you can turn it off and just have pure silence but for me i like that little bit of feedback that that, that audio feedback so i have it on all the time auto hold uh, so that is for your handbrake so when you come to a stop even on the steepest of hills put your foot on the brake to come to a stop take your foot off the brake and all the handbrake and everything that will sort you out for you it won't roll back then when you put your foot on accelerate again handbrake comes off you move away it just takes makes hill starts a doddle that's everything on that page uh, sound at the moment i'm not playing any audio when you're not playing audio the sound you can't press it but your sound on there you can change all of your bass your treble uh, you get a nice little diagram so you can slide where you want the focus of the audio so you can have all your audio on the left all your audio on the right front back in the middle um but obviously that's not on there because i'm not playing any audio at the moment phone list so that comes up with all your uh, people who have connected their phones in the past driver assistance systems so there is a lot to talk about on here again so auto hold is also on this menu here at the top there Cruise control, adaptive 
cruise control. So we did a little squad menu there. You can either have normal cruise control where you have to manually keep controlling uh, the speed so you don't get too close or too far away from the car in front. Or you put it into adaptive cruise control which sets a distance between you and the car in front and it will automatically change your speed um, to keep that maintained distance. Lane centering and protective, uh, well, your lane centering first, that is your lane keep assist, which keeps you in the middle of your lane by giving gentle steering inputs and predictive speed assist. So let's just go back onto that. So, what that does, that will scan uh, roads, uh, road signs, that will scan the curbs in the road as well. So, for example, you're coming up to a curve and you're still doing 70 miles an hour. You might not want to do 70 miles an hour through that curb because you'll understeer or oversteer uh, and that will be very good. So what they'll do, they'll scan the road and when your adaptive cruise control is on, it will slow the car accordingly to be able to then safely take that turn, which I've experienced that whilst having the cruise control on. That is a very handy feature. So you haven't actually got to touch the brake, which is very good. Let's pop that back up there. Speed limit assist, so what that does, so your uh, intelligent speed limiter, the little camera, there's a little camera up there, other side facing traffic, scans all your road signs. Say for example, I'm um, in a 30 mile an hour limit, I'll get a little 30 mile an hour symbol come up in here. If I press the speed limiter, it will automatically set the speed limiter to 30 miles an hour. Whilst the speed limiter is active, if the speed then goes up to let's say 50 or even national speed limit, that will send a message to the car and then the car will automatically set the speed limiter to that limit so theoretically you cannot breach that limit uh there are, i'm sure there's going to be certain scenarios where that might not work um but again just makes that driving that little bit easier to ensure that at least <laughs> if you do get stopped by, by the police you can say oh i have my intelligence speed limiter on my car was doing it for me but then that even that is not an excuse if you're still found to be doing over the limit of course let's close that speed warning so if the car does detect you are going over the speed limit it will give you some audio feedback on there and the moment it's off uh, i think that was default i'm going to put it back on just in, uh actually no i'm going to put it off at the moment uh lane keeping system again this just tells you so you can select whether you want a audible alert uh, or an aid or both so an aid uh, it will give you some gentle steering assistance just like that just to keep you in your lane uh, obviously default you get an audible alert and the steering aid and the alert intensity so this basically just sets the sensitivity of that alert uh, by the steering uh, sort of the feedback on there pre-collision assist so let's just move that screen up a bit so we can see it so this scans the road ahead and the car will see if you're about to have an accident uh, that will basically stop the car in an emergency for you it just senses all those conditions it, it, it does what it says on the tin um, I don't need to go through those 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 particular settings because basically distance that uh, you can set the car to how close you want to get to something before then the car takes control and puts the brakes on. Uh, automatic braking, that's what it says on the tin. Uh, evasive steering assist. So if you, say for example, you're on a road and the car is in, in front of you brakes so suddenly that you think it's going to be better to swerve if it's safe than crash into the back of it. If you quickly turn the steering wheel like that, the car's computers will then make sure that you know if you do do that very quick you're not going to slide the car um or spin it or roll it it will just it, it the car will take some control to ensure that that evasive mover is done as safe as it could be uh, which is a very handy feature on there rear view camera delay so what that does is let's just have a look yeah so uh, you've been in reverse, you parked, when you put it in forwards again, the back camera will stay on for a certain amount of time, just so you can see putting forward. So for example, you've gone to, you've parked into a space and you've gone too far back to open your boot. Um, 
you put it in fours, but you want to still see the back of the car to see how far you can pull forward again, so you've got just enough room to open the boot, but that you're not then poking out the space the other side and someone's going to smash into the side of you. That's quite handy. Uh, oops, sorry, that's quite a handy feature on there. Uh, Bliss. This is your blind spot uh, monitoring system. Uh, so in a lot of cars, you might have seen that if a car's in your blind spot, if I can defog, you won't be able to see at the moment, but you get a little, um, on, on the mirror there, you get a little sort of uh, orangey amber warning on there, which means, oh, my vehicle just said it's going to shut down if I don't press OK. There we go. Little uh, symbol on there to say that there is a car in your blind spot. Uh, that there's a very useful features on modern cars. Wrong way alert. So based on the sat nav, if the car thinks you're going the wrong way down the street, the car will say you are going wrong way down the street, and you'll know you're going wrong way down the street. Cross traffic alert. So that will. So if you're backing out of a space, there we go. If I just move on to the graphic there. If you're backing out of a space that will scan the traffic left and right, not just that way, uh, and then the car can actually intervene and brake for you if it thinks that you're going to still reverse out into someone who's coming the other way. Let's go back. Uh, reversing brake assist. So when you are reversing into a space, uh, obviously you do keep your foot on the brake, but if the car thinks you're still going to crash into a bollard or a curb or a car, then the car will still brake for you. And then the driver alert system. So this goes back to what I said at the start of the video about this little black flashing panel thing here. Uh, again, so that that is this bit here, keeping an eye on my face to make sure that I am still actually alert to the conditions ahead. And then that will give me various warnings if it thinks I am not. And that's your driver assistance systems. Vehicle. Wait for it to load. There we go. So here we go. We've got loads of things on here. Starting on the top. So vehicle power down timer. Let's go on there. So um, obviously, so if you've been in the vehicle, uh, or if, even if you haven't had the ignition on, and you exit the vehicle, you'll still get warnings to say your ignition is still on. But if you still leave your vehicle uh, after thirty minutes, the vehicle will just shut down completely and turn itself off. Rear occupant alert that um, keeps an eye on uh, people in the back. Let's go on to there. Uh, so, if there's people sitting in the back who haven't put their seatbelt on, you'll get a little warning on your display there to say that that person hasn't got their seatbelt on. Easy entry and exit. So, what that does when you're uh, say you, you just parked up, you turn the ignition off. When you turn the ignition off, your seat will move backwards um, so that you can get in and out of the car more easily. So for example, if you're uh, a less tall person and you've got your knees quite close, you know, into the steering wheel, you know, you might not be able to get out as easily as if the seat was far back. Um, so what that does, you, you shut down the ignition, seat goes back, and then what happens if, if you get back into the car and then turn the ignition on, the seat will then move back into the last position you had it. So you haven't then got to worry about them redoing your seat, which is quite a handy feature. My key, uh, I won't go fully into that. Uh, basically, that just sets various conditions, the various keys. So, um, for example, you know, you, you say you just bought this car and for whatever reason you trust your... Uh, you trust your son or your daughter to take it out, you can then set various conditions so they can't do certain things with the car, which is quite handy. Uh, onboard modem serial number. Um, so the modem that's then to connect to your app, to the Ford app. Because this is a loan car, it's already got someone uh, sort of connected to it, so I'm not going to go through that today. The alarm system, so that is basically for, you know, um, whether you, that's just making sure you want to keep the motion sense in the car live so if there's any motion in the car the alarm will go off to say oh yeah you've left your child or something in there uh, which is quite handy chime so that is the audio feedback you get uh, if there's an information bulletin come up about a message you'll get like a bong parking space found um we'll go into that in, later on in the video um that's to do with the automatic parking this car can park itself uh, in certain conditions 
let's say it can park itself but we'll go into that go up remote startup so what this does yeah so if on your app you can select um well you can remotely start the car and then from there you can then select what you want your climate doing you can select whether your uh seats and steering wheel i don't think that's your heater that's just backwards and Ah, there we go. Yes, yeah, so you can adjust the temperature of your seat and your steering wheel on there, and then sort of how long you want those actions to last. Uh, windows. There we go. So on the key. So unless it's a different spec of vehicle. So the the key you get with this car is that, but then the key on there is that um let me know in the comments if that's what this unless this is a spare key which they've programmed as a demo so you can't do certain i don't know but yeah that's not that but because i mean if you get a ford fiesta which is a fraction of the price of this you still get that key um even with the focus and the puma this is the standard ford key that you get so i don't know there we go anyway um <laughs> Let's go back on there. Wipers, courtesy wipes. So if you've just cleared your windscreen with the windscreen washer fluid, um, obviously the, the wipers go on automatically, as we know, when we clear our windscreen. But then sometimes you get a little bit of then dribble come from the top of the windscreen. Uh, so the courtesy wipe, what that does is a few seconds after they're finished wiping, the windscreen wipers will activate again just to clear any dribble, um, which has then come back down from the from the uh, from the window. Uh, rain sensing wipers, so this will adjust the speed of the wipers depending on how hard it's raining. Uh, if you're on an A road or a motorway, uh, obviously those will go faster because you know the, the spray from the motorway, you want that, that cleared quite quickly. Reverse wiper, that just turns your, you know, when your main wipers are on, your rear wiper will be on as, as well. Power tailgate, so you can either have a manual tailgate where you click a button and you have to then open it manually or automatic, which does what it says on the tin. You press the button, opens, and it closes automatically. Hands-free, uh, that's where you... Oh, hang on, let's go back on there. Uh, Hands-free feature, power to turn off. Press the button, you can have a feature. Oh, yeah, so you can still... Within it... Okay, I'll, I, I won't go into it, because I thought hands-free was when you can wipe your foot under the bumper. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Let's go back onto that. Where you can wipe your foot. Where were we, vehicle? Where you wipe your foot under the bumper and then the boot opens. But on this, you still have to press the button, so it's not hands free. But anyway, do 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 do. do. Uh, lighting. So, glare free lighting. So, this particular spec of vehicle has. Uh, I've, I've spoken about these loads of times on the videos that I've done already. Matrix LED headlights, which means, and this is a very good graphic actually, I'm quite glad this graphic's on there. You can have your full beams on, but when a car's coming the other way, it will then blank out part of that beam so you don't dazzle the other driver and make them crash, which is a very handy feature. That, so your, your full beam is still on, and your full beam is on around the car, but not in the driver's face, which just makes nighttime driving, which I do a lot, so much safer. Um, it, it, it's it's a wonderful piece of technology, and uh, you know I think more cars should come with that as standard, just because you know, headlights are getting brighter. It's a case of oh your headlights are bright, I'm going to make mine brighter. And, and at, at the moment I think we're in a headlight brightness war, because. I have to wear special glasses at, at, at night now because the lights are just so bright and so dazzling. Um, but if all if all cars had this system, it, it would be fine because they would have blanked out the brightest part of the beam kind of way. But that's enough on that. Close. Welcome lighting. So that's your puddle lights when you unlock the car so you can actually see where you're going. You get nice Mustang um, uh, logo illumination on the puddle lights there. 
adaptive headlight setup. So um, let's go on to here. A nice little graphic there. So in the UK, we drive on the left, so it's set to left-hand uh, traffic, which means basically the the beam is slightly pointing to the left, so it's not in the face of the oncoming driver. And then obviously the headlight on the right is full ahead. Uh, if you were to if you're in Europe or America or a country that drives on the right hand side of the road then you go on to right hand traffic and then that will sort it all out on there Let's scroll up a bit headlamp delays so when you get out of the vehicle and lock it your headlights will stay on a little bit longer so you can actually see uh, where you're going which is quite nice right locks auto unlock so obviously this this key is also a fob when you get close to the car, it will automatically unlock for you. When you get a certain distance away from the car, it will lock the car. Um, Miss lock chair, is that when you, I don't know if to. Yeah, so if your doors or your boot isn't quite shut and you lock the car, that will then make sure that you don't lock the car and still have a window open or a door open or whatnot. So that's what all that is on their exterior lamp feedback so when you that, that that's basically when the car flashes when you unlock and unlock it mirrors auto fold so when you unlock the car or lock the car mirrors moving and out door keypad code so if i was gonna if it does stop raining for five seconds i might include this at the end if i don't include it at the end it's because it hasn't stopped raining but if you haven't got a key you can still access the vehicle and turn the vehicle on by having a by having a um by having a, a, a passcode, which is on the door, there's like a little touch panel on the side of the door, and you can enter a passcode, which I think is absolutely amazing. Uh, it's just another little gimmick that you can tell your friends. Like, time ability kit, what is that? Um, oh, okay, yeah, so the sealant for the tyre, because because you don't get spare tyres anymore, you get a little thing of sealant spray stuff that just tells you, like, you know, there's a shelf life on those things, apparently. Tire pressure. Um, you can reset your tire pressures if you just had new tires. Uh, brake coat. So that tells you how well or how vigorously you've braked with a little display which comes up on there. Low battery. That just, you know, when your battery's low, you can set at what warning you get that. So at the moment, it's on 50 miles, which I think is realistic. Because if you have it on 20... Although the car goes off at 20 miles, again, that depends on all sorts of factors. Uh, EV driving history, yeah, that's off the moment. So that's that. General, there's quite a lot on <laughs> on general. So basically, this is just your general settings, so your language for the car, uh, temperature unit. So obviously, we have Celsius here in the UK, PSI, touchscreen beep. So that's the... Um, that's the... Um, uh, that's the feedback you get from the from the car sync. So that is your sync. So obviously this is the sync system that just gives you various bits of information on there. Obviously you've got your software licenses on there as well. Obviously we, we, I won't go on there because of privacy reasons, but we won't go on that. And then brightness for your screen. Uh, set how sort of bright and everything is on there. Uh, instrument cluster mode, so at the moment it's on dark mode because I think it uses a little bit less power than if you have it on uh, Oh sorry, that's one there, so you have it on dark or light uh, You can have the same on here as well uh, Your clock settings, 24 hour time mode uh, The time will actually updates when you're connect if you're like your phone's connected or whatnot uh, Or your car's connected to the outside world, it will then update the time accordingly Ambient lighting, this does have ambient lighting in this thing, but it's only in the footwell. So at the moment it's on blue, but you can't see that at the moment. Um, and then we have like, uh, there's only a few colours on it. So you have like a very, very whitey, light blue, orange. Obviously you can control how bright you want those individual colours. That is everything on there. Connectivity when it loads. This is all your Wi-Fi your hotspots uh, and your Bluetooth settings when you have your phone connected. Uh, so this car can act as a Wi-Fi hotspot. So if you've got passengers in the car and they need a Wi-Fi connection, 
then they can connect to the car and they've got Wi-Fi. Uh, those are just more sort of settings and various bits that don't really need to go over in this video today because they're a little bit boring. And then you've got uh, software updates, which this car set to automatic. So if there's an update on there. It will say that there's an update for your car. Update now. And as long as you have a connection, you can do that. Ford Assistant, so that's your voice control system. Uh, it's a lot better compared to Ford's of early days when it first came out, when it was literally, you can only call someone um, or, or, or mute the system. Whereas now you can do things like put the windows down, set the temperature to a certain amount left, set the temperature to a certain amount right, and there we go. This does have Alexa in there as well, which um, I haven't got Alexa on anything, so I haven't really got much to say about Alexa, but you know, you can ask Alexa to do various bits. If the Alexa's on the same account as an Alexa that you've got in your house, you can, in your house, for example, you can say, Alexa, send a destination to the to the car for the sat nav, and then that can then put the destination on the screen, which is quite good. Then valet mode, so uh, so this can basically just put a password in, so that um, basically if, if if your car is being valeted, then they can't fiddle with various systems on the car. Uh, that is everything on that immediate screen, guys. And now I'm just going to go through the uh, the 360 degree camera system we've got in this car. And then just explain the parking assist feature. This has it on there. Okay, so just going to go through the camera system and the parking assist uh, function this car has. So uh, to activate the cameras at any point during the drive, not just reversing, there's a little camera button up here. And then that brings your 360 degree view on there. And also at the moment, because we're in a Ford uh, motion on our last approach you've got the you've got the Ford camera on there uh, you know this is sort of coming more and more common in sort of more cars now where you've got the you've got a camera on the front camera on the back camera on the side uh, you've got also little blind spot cameras on there as well and then what they do they all using AI combine an image which then sort of is represented by a bird's eye view of the car which is very good, uh, let's say, you know, if you're in what looks like a tight space, you know, these lines give you an idea of, you know, how much space you need to open the door enough to get out, which is quite handy. Um, just so, you know, you don't ding the car at the side. You know, if you have to park up next to something quite close, for example, sometimes I have to park up to something quite close on this side of the car. You, tur you, can, you can even magnify that part of the car you know, so you don't get too close to it and you don't ding it, which is very good. Oh, we've gone off of it, which is very good. Uh, you can select various camera views on there. So, you know, you've got your straight ahead view and you've also got a left and right view on there as well, which is good if you're at a junction, which is slightly obscured. Uh, you get a nice little view left and right on there as well. Just your main front. And then that takes you on there, if I want to look at the back, uh, obviously I've got a larger view at the back, um, larger view at the front, tells you what my steering is doing as well if I move the wheel, which is very handy. And that little thing down there, that's just for your parking sensors to turn on and off. So activate the park feature, you go down to, let's just get out of the way, you move that to here, uh, that's your hazards on there, this is your parking, so you press that, brings you onto your parking place, so you can either navigate to the nearest parking space, or parking assistance, so you press that, and then here you select, so for example, if you're uh, if you're parallel parking, you click the parallel park button on there. If you're bay parking, you press that on there. And it can also help you get out of a space. So if you're in a space that was, you know, if you're uh, parallel parking like that, if you're in a space, when you park there, it was all right. But then someone else, when you come back, says you park quite close and you think, oh, how am I going to get out of this? Uh, the car can also assist get out of space as well. Uh, this is, say, for example, I don't know, we're going to park in a bay space. 
and the space I want to park in is on the left. So then what I'd then do, I'd put the indicator on and then that will start scan. I'm going to turn it off, but that, that will start scanning the spaces uh, to the left of the car or to the right if you're parking the spaces on the right. Uh, but in this case, we'll do the left. Say that that car wasn't there, it would drive past. The sensor will go bong if the space thinks it's wide enough. And then there'll be a prompt on the screen, press the prompt, uh, and then just keeping your foot near the brake as well. The car will then give all the steering input needed to then reverse uh, in to the space. Obviously, you'll only do it reversing, but it will reverse into the space. And as I said, there are certain conditions where it might not work perfectly you have to have your foot you know at least resting ever so slightly on the brake so you can take immediate control and it doesn't take away the fact that you know you do still need to do your look you know your your your, your mirrors you need to check for people uh, obviously if people get too close the car might break but again there's certain conditions where that might not work so you still have to be alert it doesn't take away the the alertness you have to have whilst using this feature but it just again it, it's it's more of an assist as I said, it's Active Park Assist, not Active Park, you know. So, um, again, that will work exactly the same way. If you're going to do a bay park, uh, sorry, if you're going to do a parallel park, again, same system that will scan the space. If the car thinks the space is big enough, uh, it will make a bong. You press the button uh, or the prompt on screen, and then it will reverse into that space. And then, obviously, the steering wheel moves, uh, obviously, by itself as well. If I can do a demonstration of that, I will. And I'll include it in the video. If it's not in the video, it's because I haven't done a demonstration of it. I think, guys, that is everything on the infotainment screen. Uh, just a little quick interior tour then. So, as I said, it's a nice, spacious camera. I'm just going to zoom zoom out a bit. So, as I said, you've got a nice leather steering wheel here. Uh, this is the premium car. So, what you also get, you get the Bang & Offsen sound system. Uh, just show you the little logo on there. So you get this big sound bar on here. You also get your side speakers on there. You've got more sound bar uh, bits on there. Another speaker down there. And then you've got this thing here, which I believe is the uh, speaker slash sub, which then bounces that bass off the windscreen into the cabin uh the sound it is an amazing sound system i mean if you're lucky enough to have one of these put the most bassiest song on you've got turn the bass up and it oh it is absolutely amazing um you, know, you get this nice it's not real carbon fiber but you get this nice carbon fiber effect trim you've got your leather trim and again your red your nice red stitching which is absolutely amazing on there uh, your power button there uh, obviously you press that on or off the stitching and the carbon effect trim continues there and oops, and it also continues there down here you've got your controls for the camera focuses so your max screen heating uh, your, your your max screen clearing function on there you've got your lighting control which at the moment I've forced it off um, but it's not off completely because the DRL, the uh, daylight running lights stay on, but you've got off, you've got your side lights, oh, and then the ambient lighting comes on at the bottom. Uh, automatic mode, so that is the headlights on full automatic. Um, that will also be your automatic high beam as well. Or you can force it uh, on to low beam. Uh, there we go. What I found, it's not... Uh, it's not dark enough to fit, but if you have it on auto and then put it on uh, put it on forced low beam, it's ever so slightly brighter uh, on low beam if you force it on low beam than it is if you put it on automatic. Again, that's probably more to do with the anti glare, um, so it's just reduced that glare just a teeny bit, uh, obviously because it is an automatic system. And here you just got your button, you know, your brightness, uh, like you have on a monocle. So that does your brightness on there. So you can have it as bright as you want. You know, not that it's gonna make a massive amount of difference, but like a mobile phone, like, oh, my battery's low, I'm gonna turn the brightness down. To be honest, will you notice a difference? I don't know. But obviously having a lower brightness means slightly less power 
going to that screen. But again, you know, you probably, you know, <laughs> in an electric car, I don't think you're going to notice that. And then you've got your electronic, electronic stability control. You can force that off as well. But to be honest, unless you're going on a track day, don't. Because, you know, if you're going from a petrol or diesel car to an electric car, again, you will know because the power delivery is just like that. There is no lag. Uh, which is very good down here got your oh sorry and then uh, here you've got your seating memory control so which is handy if you've got different drivers at different heights you can uh, lock and unlock your doors on the inside down here you've got all your window controls for the front and rear of the car uh, you've got your force mirror there we go you can force it like that uh, and then uh, you, you can turn your window child locks on using that one there and then to do your to change your mirrors you then select what mirror you want and then you adjust the mirror using that there uh, down here so door handles aren't like ones you do like that they're little things that you you pull like that and then the door opens which I think is actually quite good obviously the same on that side again the passenger can also lock and unlock the car doors on there as well really nice leather very comfortable seats actually i think the i think the lumbar support particularly in this car which is electronically adjusted i think that's the best that i've actually had in a car that i've tested uh, at the time of this video um nice it's it really nice nice wipe clean as well on there center console you know i said you've got wireless charging pad in there you've got some charges move that out of the way you've got some uh usb c and normal usb charging there this rubber bit does come off uh which reveals that that is the wireless charging pad there and i don't know if you can see that very well but you get a little mustang logo in there as well my phone does not wireless charge through the pad but i think that's because i've got a really thick case so what i have to do i, I have to take this out and then put the phone on this pad here um but you know if you haven't got a massively thick case that will work just fine i mean i've got an s23 ultra which is actually too big <laughs> when the mat's in um cup holders yeah that's all good uh two there sort of automatic sort of clamping of your cups like i said that's that's your park that's your hazards that's your uh drive selector handbrake uh as you could force it on or off nice armrest which is nice and long which goes throughout the car put it up you've got some really deep storage in there you've got nice storage in there 12 volt socket um like i said really nice and deep here you get this little thing here uh, i don't know that's where you put your key but there we go and obviously that then slides like that which is quite nice back of the car it, again, it's a nice place to be in the back of the car. You've still got a lot of headroom thanks to that panoramic roof. You get a flat floor because there's no prop shaft. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, yeah, so even if you have a seat, uh, a, a passenger sitting there, you get a nice Mustang uh, horse logo there. And then these, if I can move the camera, nice little vents for your passengers. And then you've got some more. USB charging there and here you've got your centre armrest and cup holders and then you've got your boot in the back as well well I think that's everything guys so thank you very much for watching this video Again, comment like subscribe subscribe particularly because the more subscribers the more chances of more cars Thank you very much for watching. Um, any questions you have, shove them in the comments and I shall answer them as quickly as possible for you. Uh, but for now, thank you very much for watching, guys. And till the next video, cheerio.